All right. All right. Evan Ginsberg, back with another edition of Evan Ginsberg's Legends TV, usually co-hosted by Steve Ludwig, but uh, Steve's uh, beloved wife, Sue, her uh, mom is uh, going through some difficult times, and we send out our best wishes to Steve and Sue. And uh, while we're on that subject, James Grover from our house band, Edwin, Edwin Vasquez Musica, his mom passed the other day, and uh, we send our condolences to James and the family. And uh, James is not only a great musician, but a wonderful human being, and all our best to James. And we're going to dedicate this show to James's mom. And without further ado, I have a very special co-host today. He's a noted poet, and he's been on the show before. If you uh, watch our early archives of Legends TV, you'll see him doing sets of poetry. And um, he is John Winnell. How are you today, John? Very good, Evan, and thank you for having me on. And again, my condolences to Steve and to James and Heartfelt. And uh, I'm doing well, you know. And the weather is great. And Happy New Year to everybody out there. And it's really a pleasure to be back on. It was great fun. I'm sorry that the circumstances are the way they are. But again, it's always fun to be back. And I want to be supportive to everybody. And thank you, Evan and Madhouse. And, and tell us briefly about yourself. You have a chapbook out. Tell us about that. Yeah, I have a chapbook out. It's called Poems for Everyday People. And um, if anybody's interested, I'm actually going to try to read something from it. You can, you can get it. It's poems that I've actually written and worked on for a number of years. And I continue to write some of them. I've, some of them are in here that I've worked on for a number of years and revised and revised and revised. And if anybody is interested, they can get it through John Winnell, J-O-N-W-I-N-E-L-L -L at yahoo.com. Just contact me and I will send off replies and, and the book if you're interested. And um, yeah, I mean, I've been reading and writing poetry for a number of years and had, have had some good fortune reading around New York City and Brooklyn and Manhattan, some nice spots and little clubs. And of course, uh, with you, Evan, we've done some fun things and through this show and just, you know, branching out that way as well. And it's just been just a great fun and, and good experience to putting my feelings, illuminations lu out on paper to the public. And many times you've performed live with Edwin Vasquez Musica behind you. What's it like having a world-class band backing you as you do poetry? That was great, great fun. I several found times, several times. Several times, that's right. It was, um, I mean, the guys are so great. They're so supportive. It was just getting into this groove, and it was more fun than, than, than just, of course, reading the work. It gave it legs, or gave it, gave it, Gave it bouncier legs, I should say. These guys are so great. I think they could they could play with anybody, and and they were so generous in their time and and uh, to to you know su support both back and forth. And you mentioned they could play with anybody. If you go to MadhouseTV.com under Evan Ginsberg's Legends TV or LegendsTV.net, you can see the archives. And there's Edwin Vasquez Musica playing with Cooley High hip hop artist playing with Felix Cabrera, who's a uh, blues legend, et cetera, so on. These guys can play with anybody. They They're sure, virtuoso musicians. They sure can. Those were some dynamite shows. I mean, I was fortunate enough to, to, to watch those and all the power out to those guys. They, They're at they, the Shrine tonight in Manhattan, if anybody wants to check it that's out. That's right. Name, named after the great Fela Kuti, the there Shrine. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And rather than just talk about your poetry, we'd love to hear two pieces, and I believe they're about loss, which is appropriate. Yes, I, I, uh, these are two. One is, one is an, a newer piece, and the other is an older piece, and they, they do have to deal with loss and, and, and reflection. And this first one is called Night of Leaping Fireflies. And uh, it, it's about reflection and coming to terms with pluses and minuses in life and looking back and of course dealing with the end of, uh, as, as things uh, uh, sum up. It goes like this. All summer she remained transfixed, a sleeping caterpillar enwrapped in silk, her body broken 
emaciated, curled in pain, lost in yesterday's gallantry, running home from school, passing the haunted trees outside the orphanage's closed black iron gate, scraping knees on concrete. The sting of alcohol, smells of lunch quietly simmering as she washed her gentle hands. Time's protective illusion slowly dissolves into a quarter moon. Afternoons collecting paper and shells along abandoned shorelines. Evenings alone waiting for the jangling of keys that would announce arrival. Betrayal was fierce like acid turning up insides. That summer in Moscow, the portrait still clings to the wall. Was laughter and tenderness lost in the ballerina's curls? Tonight, as fireflies leap through moist grass, illuminating the air for but a brief moment, it all returns and quietly fades as crisp October leaves. Beautiful. Thank you. And then I'll read this one. This ends the book. And it's about the, ends, the end of the day. The, and I guess the, the, se- the theme of finality um, and the cruelty of nature, but in a quiet, elegant way. And it goes like this. The bitter taste of sunlight trickles through steely New York City streets. I watch birds flutter from rooftops, curious, hungry, pulling discarded pieces of bread, chasing each other in the park. As light of the longest day drips into the oblivion of darkness, two felines lounging in the street await my arrival. The moon hovers near full, resting on the crest above the crooked tree, while a crow devours the remnants of a cloud. Thank you. That's great, John. Thank you so much. And uh, again, uh, we'd like to uh, do this in memory of uh, James Grove, his mom. And J- James is a very big part of Legends TV. And yes. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me co-host. And thanks to Steve and, you, and Evan and everybody else here. And again, my condolences uh, to all these wonderful people. And speaking of everybody else, in just a moment, we're going to have Jasmine Clemente, a wonderful young singer. And uh, we want to thank all of our uh, sponsors for our radio shows and various projects, ABC, Movers and Shakers, a and Comics. And um, without further ado, we will be back in just one moment after this very brief timeout, folks. Don't go anywhere. Jasmine Clemente coming up. For nearly a decade, Evan Ginsberg's Legends Radio has featured interviews with the greatest names in the arts and sports. Heard worldwide at legendsradio.net, the program has featured these great musical legends, Ray Manzarek of the Doors, Billy Corgan of Smashing Pumpkins, Judy Collins, Roberta Flack, and many more. Stars from movies, TV, and comedy have included Jenny McCarthy, Wayne Brady, 30 Rock's Judah Friedlander, Shelley Berman, Jackie the Joke Man Motling, David Allen Greer, and Paul Mooney. Stars of pro wrestling and MMA include Bruno Sammartino, Rowdy Roddy Piper, superstar Billy Graham, and Frank Shamrock. Co-hosted by renowned journalist Dr. Mike Leno, Legends Radio is heard Wednesday, 7 p.m. to 9.20 p.m. Eastern Standard. We are archived 24-7 with hundreds of hours of classic interviews. Legends Radio also features the best in indie music, showcasing talent deserving wider exposure. You missed the birth of your mother and father. Don't you dare miss Evan Ginsberg's Legends Radio. 
Are you planning an event and want to include entertainment, but you're not sure where to turn? Act One Entertainment.net has provided over 1,500 events with quality, affordable live entertainment at private parties, corporate affairs, festivals, bike rallies, and more. Act One will fit into your budget. They're friendly, reliable, and do all the legwork for you. They take all major credit cards. Log on to Act One Entertainment.net for a free, no obligation price quote or call 631 758 3505 for a brochure. You'll be happy you did. All right, Evan Ginsberg back with Legends TV, and we are joined by the talented, the spiritual, the beautiful Jasmine Clemente. How are you today? Thank you, Evan. You're you great it. yourself, you know. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> I love much. The introduction. There you go. <laughs> and uh, you were telling me earlier, you have a project that is global uh, from Africa. Tell us a little about that. Yes. Um, well, speaking of me being spiritual, <laughs> I have a single called Soulmates. Um, it just dropped on August 1st, and it's on a record label called Quabosity Records. It's from South Africa, and two producers, let me see if I can pronounce their name correctly. <laughs> it's um, Maccabee and Mabali. I believe that's how I pronounce the name, but, you know, it's a South African kind of thing. So they um, are the two producers who made the music, and I wrote the lyrics Soulmate. There you um, go. Yeah. And uh, I was saying that during my single days when I was practicing serial monogamy, <laughs> I had many soulmates who became exes. So um, <laughs> what's your take on that? Um, it's funny because, you know, being spiritual again, you know, they always say everything that has a beginning has an end. Right, the alpha and the omega, you know, you can't have birth without having death. And it's just uh, it's the world that we live in. It's a world of opposites. So you meet soulmates, and sometimes they come into your life for a special reason, but it doesn't mean that they'll be there forever, you know, and you just kind of have to be strong about it and embrace the beautiful moments that you had with them. And then when it's time to part ways, you part ways. I, I've had experiences where ex-girlfriends have come into my life and I think they're almost like angels because they helped you get through difficult times, right? right? Like when my dad was dying and, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, the relationships end, but they always have a special place in your heart because they've gotten you through some terrible things. And that's what a soulmate usually is. That's why it's called soulmate because it's, it's a connection with the soul. So, you know, whatever you're going through in life as you evolve and grow to become a wiser or better person, that person comes into your life as a mate to kind of help your soul evolve. So while you're going through the changes of evolving, you know, that's why they, they hold a special place in your heart because it's not just a companion. It's not just about convenience. You know, it's, it's more about I'm helping your soul blossom and, and helping you to love more or to become wiser or stronger. That's why it's such a soul connection. It's so deep. There you go. And John, they say that, they say that poets, <laughs> only the poets and saints truly see. Who was that quote from? Oh, God. It's probably an older quote. But anyway, as a poet, <laughs> what, as a poet what's your take on soulmates? Well, I mean, if, it's, if it is true, they do say that there is that one person, but, you know, Lord knows, I think lightning would <laughs> strike me before I, I have, uh, I think I possibly, uh, I mean, I guess they're out there. You just have to keep your heart and your ears and your eyes open Yeah. and be lucky. Well, uh, the one soulmate thing, I've heard about that too, but I've heard it's called a twin flame, which is different from a soulmate. You made a face. Like, no, I have no idea. You're going to teach me now. <laughs> What's a twin, twin flame? flame is usually, <laughs> what, what they say is that when, when God created your soul, he split it in two halves. Oh, and so okay. your soul is a, a flame. It's a, burning, it's a burning flame. And your twin flame is someone who vibrates at the same vibration, but it's the highest vibration of love. Interesting. Well, that so also, that's the different two, from a soulmate. The two sides, it's from Plato also, the two sides. One person that was split in half it goes back to the Greeks, I guess. Mm. Uh, so but, soulmates are not as uh, high loving as a twin flame. They could be someone that could... Cause you havoc. That's right. As, as, I've, as, had that too. I've had that too. I've had that too. As they usually do. But I wanted to ask a question. Mm -hmm. why, why the, what's the South African connection? How did, how did that happen? That's amazing. Actually, um, it was in January. So it came during the new year, which I thought was a really great sign. And they emailed me. They found me on Facebook. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> go figure. So go. I have a lot of um, I have a lot of fans on Facebook, and you know I do a lot of networking and stuff. Everyone knows Facebook is like a great, you know, obviously it's a global network. So um, they were following me on Facebook, and they you know reached out to me. I liked their music. I heard it, and I thought it was a great opportunity because it's in South Africa. It's, it gives me a connection to mm. you know expand more in another country. Well, they have a great so, history of music in South Africa, anyway. Right. And I, I love dance music, but there's different um, genres of dance music. And my what I really love is house music, which is a little bit um, spe more specific than just dance, which is a, a you know a vague genre. So house music in Africa, house music is very 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 big out there. It's like the it's like the motherland for house music. So to actually be working with people from South Africa, where it's the heart and soul of house music, I'm like, well, that's that's awesome. How you know? exciting. That's yeah. great. That's great. And what I usually say is instead of just talking about it, why don't we see it? Let's go to Jasmine's video, and uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this, folks.
All right, and we're back. And uh, that was great, Jasmine. Enjoyed that very much. Thank you. Beautiful. And um, tell us about your upcoming gigs. I know you're doing something with Jackie Melendez and the Women's Entrepreneurial Network, October 19th, yes, I believe. October 19th, which is it's actually um, a cancer, breast cancer month or... I'm not sure if it's just breast cancer month or if it's just uh, cancer in general, but cancer awareness. Cancer I believe, awareness. Yeah. yeah. Um, I always think of breast cancer for some reason. I guess because it's just so sadly popular, but you know, uh, just common. I would say. Um, so that's nice. I mean, because I I want to do music like that song. That video is called Everything You Need. So that's about um, that everything you need is already inside of you, and I want people to know that because you know life is short. Like I said in the song, um, and there's things that happen. You know, you can get cancer or you can you know just you know on earth you're not meant to stay things happen so you want to live the best life that you possibly can while you're here because life is a gift you know so I like to do music that is is just empowering you know soulmates everything you need free my spirit is has spiritual lyrics in it um yeah so everything is just I want to empower people with my lyrics I'm going to throw out like multiple cliches in the next 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Live every day like it's your last. Right. Seize the day. Right. What else, John? Oh, God. Seize the moment. Seize yeah. the moment. Yeah. <laughs> now, really, um, <laughs> you know, you never know what's going to happen. Right. You never know. And, uh, I think Joan Didion wrote a book about that, that things can change in an instant. You could, so you could you hit the $100 million dollar lotto. Or you could get a real bad diagnosis right. at the doctor's office. Your life could change in a second. That's right. You could get hit by a car. You could find your soulmate. You know, right, right. You know, really, who brings you havoc? No. Who brings havoc? <laughs> or joy, or both. Right. right. So pre appreciate every every moment as if what it's your last day. That that other uh, mm -hmm. what's that quote? Live live today like it's your last day, but Absolutely. dream of you know full. Right. You know, take care of what you have to take care Absolutely. of. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm going to say one last thing on this subject. Um, you could have $100 million in the bank. You could be living in a mansion. You could have a Mercedes parked outside. But at the end, what matters are friends and family. Yes. That's what matters. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And on that happy note, uh, please tell the, uh, <laughs> tell the viewers how they could get in touch with you, how they could check out your music. Sure. Um, well, you can Google Jasmine Clemente. I'll spell it J-A-S-M-I-N-E, Clemente, C-L-E-M-E-N-T-E. -E. Um, I have music on Track Source, uh, where you can find Free My Spirit, um, Soulmates. Uh, you can find it on Track Source, Juno Downloads, um, Beat Courts. These are all different sources, uh, um, uh, iTunes. Um, YouTube, <laughs> my music video. So just Google my name, Jasmine Clemente, and a whole bunch of different sources should come up. I'm on Twitter and Instagram and all that good social media stuff. And I just want to very briefly wrap it up with uh, the fact that you are a cousin of Roberto Clemente. And I was at Shea Stadium when I was a kid, and Bob Moose pitched a no-hitter. The Pittsburgh Pirates pitched a no-hitter against the Mets, and Roberto Clemente made a diving catch to save the no-hitter. And it was one of the most amazing things I've, I've ever seen. And not only was he a great, great ball player, he was a humanitarian, and he died helping people. Wow. Mm. Yeah. You see mm. what I mean? That, yeah. you know, just that's a life that, you know, you feel like you, you did your job or you've done your mission. And there's different types of missions. Everyone's mission is different, but you just want to feel like you've fulfilled your dharma. There you go. And, folks, we will be right back with authors Candy Sparks and Carmen M. Cologne. And Jasmine will be singing live for us at the very end of the show, so don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you. This is Beth. Hi. Hi. Oh, congratulations. What do you do? I'm not pregnant. Oh, look at that. Excuse me. You're totally thin. You look very sexy. For life's bleachable moments, all it takes is three quarters of a cup. Hi, I'm Steve Ludwig. When I was 52 years old, I had quintuple open heart bypass surgery, and I wrote a book about it. It's called See You in CCU. Apart from having my rib cage sawed apart, I experienced temporary loss of memory, depression, 
and sleepless nights in unbearable pain. A lot of people might think there's nothing funny about that, but I think it all depends on how you look at it. See you in CCU. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Alright, Evan Ginsberg back with Legends TV and we are honored to be joined by Carmen M. Cologne, who like myself went to Brooklyn Tech, <laughs> and Candy Sparks, and they are both authors and involved in various, uh, various community activities. Um, and what we're going to do before we start the interview is go to Candy's video, which will explain it far better than what I do. Um, this is a very brief video that will showcase Candy Sparks in action. Check it out, folks. People, people, we are here today to bring to you... Welcome to Max's Thirsty Lemonade Program. I'm Max. That's short for Max. He's a small business owner and entrepreneur. This is my mom and money manager. I learned all about money from her. I wrote a kid's book series about money. Can I have some money? Showed me all about the value of a dollar, setting goals, and spending wisely. You teach kids so many things. Why not how to budget and save money from a young age? Here's your lemonade. Thanks, Max. This is the best lemonade I've ever tasted. Can I have some money? Yes, you can. I'm saving this in the bank. My plan is to make, save, and grow some money. You can find Can I Have Some Money at your local bookstore. It's also on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and my website, Can I Have Some Money? Better to make, save, and accumulate a money. Everybody loves not Jones. And Candy, uh, can I have some money? <laughs> yeah. Here it is. There you go. There you go. Tell us why financial literacy for kids is so important. Well, as Carmen and I often discuss, when uh, children are in their formative years, they're learning life skills, and that's the very foundation. So teaching them about money, how to manage it, what it is, and use it wisely is really important. And I think you also have to learn to say no sometimes to a kid. You know, mommy, 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 I want that. that. That's fine. But maybe you need a good report card first. Maybe you need to clean your room. Maybe you have to earn that. <laughs> what, what's your take on that? Well, my take is there's a difference between no and not now. Correct. And, right? Absolutely. And sometimes no can create a rebellion or a feeling of shame or, or something else that we really don't mean. What we really mean is you have to earn it. So this is what I need you to do, and then it's no problem. Just like in life. So what would earn a kid... You know, that iPhone or whatever he's, you know, complaining about, demanding. What would, 
Oh, that's that's a different territory. It depends on the need. This parent says, if you need it, then we find a reason to to get it. But uh, iPhones depends on the age. Okay. How 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 do you teach them? I mean, it's a very very important lesson on the value of money. What do you write that in the book? Do you have lessons or their activities? I was just curious. Well, I think that, I mean, and that's a key point. When it comes to children, we all want to know how do we teach the value of a dollar? Because a dollar in one home means everything, and a dollar in another home is disposable income. So what we have to work with is with, within your home, within that child, what is that framework like? What is it like? So is it that you can have it and then I take it away if you know something wasn't quite up to par, or is it that you earn it first? So we have different ways of, of evaluating how that works best to teach your child about money. But I always want to make sure that the love is the most important thing. The money is secondary to that. So we never want to tie it to you know, a shame-based punishment behavior, but rather a good thing and not no, but maybe not no. And you do various seminars on this. Um, how do people reach you and how do, tell us a little about the seminars themselves. Oh, thank you. Well, a lot of them I actually wind up partnering with Carmen so that we have. Okay. Okay. <laughs> partners in time. Well, partners in prosperity also. That's true too. <laughs> all right. Um, well, first of all, my website is the basic point of contact, which is www.sparksfly.org. And, um, I'm also in the New York City public school system and, and do various webinars and things like that. So I'm always accessible that way. That's great. That's great. And Carmen, when I asked you about the publicity for this particular show, you said bill you as mother, engineer, author, and advocate. Absolutely. With mother first. Why, why, why first? Uh, it's the greatest, I wouldn't even call it a job. It is the one vocation that if I lost or decided not to do any of the others, I could do that till my dying day. And I met your kids, and, and they're wonderful kids. I love my boys. Very well adjusted. <laughs> <laughs> and not to, not to bring things down, but you, know, you had a loss in your family. We were talking about loss earlier in the show. How do you get kids through something like that? For me, um, I, I'm from a divorced set of parents. And I myself have been divorced for 17 years. And for me, when I realized that I was going to be on my own with my sons, I made the conscious decision to make them my partners. So I, while I did not exactly shield them from reality, I did the best that I could to help transition them through it as I was going through it. I would rather they see me human and flawed than some sort of mommy does everything and takes care of everything because if anything had happened to mommy, they wouldn't have had anyone exactly to turn to. So I made it my business to not only raise them to be self-sufficient, um, but also to recognize that everyone's human, especially mommy. I sat at a restaurant with you and your son, and I was very impressed that he was looking us in the eye. He wasn't playing with a telephone or some gadget, which I see kids. That's guilty for me. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, seriously. But that's manners. I mean, that's appropriate. I, I, I but a lot of so. kids don't know from it. Right. I mean, that's something that's been lost. I mean, family is very important. And, you know, that whole tying everything together, even being aware of the value of time, love, money, and, and all of that, I think. I'm so glad you said that because my book, Out on a Limb, actually has to deal with uh, those formative years where a person's character is defined in middle school, actually. And it's getting younger and younger where young people feel pressured, whether it's through society, uh, uh, the media, or their peers in school, to be a certain way or act a certain way. So they don't have an opportunity to be self-aware. What they tend to recognize are the things that make them uncomfortable about themselves, and they want to change and fit in. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I always stress to my children is that they were all unique, and that what they felt was absolutely valid, and that no one was going to live their life but they were. And that as long as I appreciated them however they were, to heck with everybody else. So when I realized that a lot of uh, the people that I came across, the young people, we both did seminars um, at Barnard recently for Girl Scouts of America, where she did financial literacy and I did personal branding. And it's very much like that. You brand yourself. You become the reputation you allow. So uh, I wrote a book for middle school kids as opposed to younger children. 
And um, Meadow, the character, is a unique character and pretty much me when I was in middle school. Um, Beautiful wanting artwork, to fit by in. the way. Hatice, the art of HB. She is from Turkey. <laughs> she is amazing. <laughs> It was worth a two-year wait to find her. Um, the Art of HB on Facebook, and you can find her. She is amazing. Uh, I, because of her and because of the um, popularity of the illustrations, we're hoping, we're hoping for uh, a series for Meadow to live through all of uh, children's issues within her, within her photographs. So, so um, what are I'm some grateful. of the issues that, that come up in this book? In this particular book, it's about self-awareness and self-doubt, and then peer pressure and bullying, making children decide at such an early age whether they're going to allow themselves to be bullied as they continue on in life, or whether they're going to stand up for themselves. Mm. So it's very much about self-esteem. This is why we work so well together, because we're talking about empowerment for children, whether it's a younger and older or for the family. So that it's standing up for yourself, it's learning how to, who you are in self-definition, -de as well as how that carries out in your social relationships, in your financial relationships, in your family. So absolutely. It's a foundation. And I met Candy about 15 years ago when I myself was on public assistance raising these three boys by myself. And sh she said, you need a financial advisor. And I said, really? I want a house, a Volvo, and, <laughs> and uh, college tuition for all three of my kids. Can you do that? And she said, yes. So I sat down, and I'll tell you now, 15 years later, I have my house. She has the Volvo. Well, you know. I have the mommy SUV. But um, all three of my children in September will each be in college. That's and great. so yeah. That's great. I'm, I'm grateful for the of partnership. Course, yeah. Absolutely. But here's the secret, Evan. <laughs> she said, can I do it? And I said, yes. And the secret is you actually did that. That's true. Isn't that wow. beautiful? She had faith in me. And then I realized that I needed to have faith in me, too. I, I think it's nice also to bring in the Girl Scout connection, which is Absolutely. very much empowerment and achieving and building and raising money. You have all of that element. For, for me, and I know for Candy, it's providing a role model that they're not accustomed to seeing. It's one thing when you go in and you have teachers, but we're talking about people, not off the street, but, you know, women who have been uh, successful in their own areas um, to come in and then mentor younger women and to speak to them like younger women so that they themselves can become self-aware and then decide for themselves what they want for their lives. With, I would, if with, it's okay. With with. Girls dating, younger and younger, I see so many of them with abusive boyfriends. What, what, what would you say, I know you can't cure the ills of the world in a few minutes, but no. what would you say to you know, young people, teenagers, just dating the wrong people? It's a, it's a decision that needs to be made in every household. I can only speak to myself. I, t I said this to each one of my children as they became uh, aware of themselves and aware of themselves uh, sexually. I said, it's all well and good, it's very natural, it's very normal, but until you're 17 and you're emotionally capable to match the rest of you, it's nothing but books for you. <laughs> so the same thing I was taught with my father. Uh, dating is gonna have to hold off until you're 17 or 18. In the meantime, you need to structure a path for yourself to figure out what you're gonna do with your life because relationships come and go. But what you provide for yourself, that's forever. Absolutely. The thing with stopping the abuse is that when you respect yourself and you love yourself, you know how good that feels. And anything that doesn't match that, it's got to go. The first time anybody hits you, <laughs> leave. <laughs> that's it. It's oh. simple. See, right. my mom would say, hit him back. But you're right. You're right. My dad would say that. Yeah. If it's OK, I really would love to mention the other women uh, and, and men because that's very important. It's not just women empowering young women. Uh, Marie Roker Jones runs Raising Great Men. And so I've provided some blog articles for the Good Men Project on their online magazine. So parenting questions such as those, I try to answer in letters to my sons, and then people can, can read them there. Um, the book will officially come out next month. And Candy and I are going to have a book signing and release party in October. Yes. Oh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, Mark Anthony Jenkins, who is the president of the Black Writers Guild of America, is hosting. And the New York City Black Expo is sponsoring the book signing 
and their expo is December 21st. So I want everyone to come out to say hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> if you have a classroom and you want us to come talk, we're available. Oh, Absolutely. speaking of which, um, yes. where October will, 14th. Where will that be, the signing? The, the book signing, we're hoping to have it um, at the Red Rooster in Harlem, but we can, uh, on Evan's uh, website, as well as on my website, uh, carmenmcolone.info, or on Candy's website, uh, sparksfly.org. Sparksfly.org, <laughs> um, it'll be on there, yeah. and uh, as well as our touring engagements. October's a busy month, October 14th. I've got a big youth financial literacy event called Financially Loving Yourself that's going to be at the Grace Church on Madison Avenue. So bring your children, bring your teenagers, bring your parents. <laughs> be All fun. right, and uh, ladies, we must wrap it up, but uh, thank you so much for appearing on Legends TV, and thank you for all you do in the community. And, you know, I, I know Carmen is relentlessly on that computer just with all these different organizations and Candy also. <laughs> And that, that's great. Absolutely. It's great. It's thank you, Evan. Thank I'm you. really grateful to thank you. you. Oh, thank, thank you, you so Carmen. much. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Carmen. It's like a big love fest here. <laughs> How are you, Carmen? And we will be good, right back after this brief commercial timeout, and we're going to bring we're going to bring uh, Jasmine Clemente for a great music set. Don't go anywhere. Like so many people, are your finances tight lately? Afraid to open your mail or even answer your phone? Well, take heart. You don't have to live like that. If you're 62 or older and own your own home, you can join the thousands of folks who have used safe and effective government-insured reverse mortgages. The government-insured reverse mortgages from Long Island's Senior Reverse Network allow you to stay in your home and turn equity into tax-free cash. Our government-insured reverse mortgages can eliminate mortgage payments, credit card balances, or just improve your lifestyle. Do yourself a favor and solve these problems now. Call the Senior Reverse Network and our advisors will answer all of your questions about our reverse mortgage programs. We've helped scores of senior Long Island homeowners like you who now enjoy a worry-free retirement. Get the financial security and peace of mind you've dreamed about. Pick up the phone and call us at the Senior Reverse Network now to set up a free consultation. Call 1-800-985-REVERSE. That's 1-800-985-7383. When your cable's on the fritz, you get frustrated. When you get frustrated, your daughter imitates. When your daughter imitates, she gets thrown out of school. When she gets thrown out of school, she meets undesirables. When she meets undesirables, she ties the knot with undesirables. And when she ties the knot with undesirables, you get a grandson with a dog collar. Don't have a grandson with a dog collar. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. When your cable company keeps you on hold, you get angry. When you get angry, you go blow off steam. When you go blow off steam, accidents happen. When accidents happen, you get an eye patch. When you get an eye patch, people think you're tough. When people think you're tough, people want to see how tough. And when people want to see how tough, you wake up in a roadside ditch. Don't wake up in a roadside ditch. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. When you pay too much for cable, you throw things. When you throw things, people think you have anger issues. When people think you have anger issues, your schedule clears up. When your schedule clears up, you grow a scraggly beard. When you grow a scraggly beard, you start taking in stray animals. And when you start taking in stray animals, you can't stop taking in stray animals. Stop taking in stray animals. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes. Right, right. Hmm. And I'll tell you what kind of
event and want to include entertainment, but you're not sure where to turn? Act One Entertainment.net has provided over 1,500 events with quality, affordable live entertainment at private parties, corporate affairs, festivals, bike rallies, and more. Act One will fit into your budget. They're friendly, reliable, and do all the legwork for you. They take all major credit cards. Log on to Act One Entertainment.net for a free, no obligation price quote or call 631 758 3505 for a brochure. You'll be happy you did. Dry zone. And like the rain that comes down, the sun comes out the next day. I'm a survivor. So I'm alive, breathing, sharing all the harmony with the people around me, feeling in that positive energy that I need so I can. The universe is gonna do its job mm -hmm. I have to free my spirit let down my God Trust the universe is gonna do its job mm -hmm. And I will fly so very high and I will fly oh, oh, oh. I have a to be true To my heart and soul Cause my life has purpose And it means more than So, soulmates, 
Are you someone that is here to stay? Are you someone that won't go away? Are you someone that is here to stay? Are you someone that won't go away?